let's discuss costs in the long run and we'll do so using this graph now one thing to mention about the long run is that all inputs are variable and that matters so that means that the total costs which are going to be composed from the capital expenses and the labor expenses they both vary we do not have the fixed cost that we were spreading per unit meaning that in the long run if capital becomes obsolete we can change it that's the intuition behind it and with this in mind we can now argue why the long run average cost looks like an envelope why is it decreasing but beyond a certain point it starts increasing let's use intuition to explain this so recall that the average cost is going to be is going to be the total cost divided by the output so that's going to be the capital expenses spread over the output plus the wage times the labor the the expenses on the labor spread over the output of production in the beginning we can see that we're starting at a high long run average cost so for instance at this level of output when we produce just a bit at q1 we are having quite a high long run average cost let's say it's 11 dollars per unit for instance why is that the case well because we only produced very little let's say we produce two units here at two units of production the capital expenses is going to be on average quite high because we're spreading only on two units and we're paying the the you know the labor to produce those two, those two units but at the moment speaking about the labor doesn't really help us because the labor is always gonna increase with production so if we hire of course up to a point it's going to be diminishing returns of labor but if we hire more people to produce more we're also going to pay more wages overall so what's ma so what's more important here is to discuss about this capital that we're spreading over the output because for a for a short period of time the capital that we bought is an investment is a fixed investment but beyond a certain point we can replace it for a new one so we'll see how it works out on the graph for instance suppose we're getting now for from q1 to q2 over here let's suppose this is going to be the production for q2 where we have let's say five units of output and now the average cost per unit decreases to eight dollars now why did that decrease well because the capital that we invested to produce was spread now over five units not over two so when quantity increases the fraction the ratio of capital expenses to quantity decreases that's just by definition the mathematical expression dragging down which drags down the long run average cost this is our average cost so because this one is decreasing it has the property to decrease this one as well now we get to a point where we reach a certain minimum we can see that we reach a certain minimum which we'll discuss later why this happens at this intersection but beyond beyond that minimum point it starts rising again why is that the case well because beyond a certain point for instance over here let's say at q3 where we already produced nine units after nine units we might need to replace the capital so we might have a higher fixed investment again meaning that if we have a new a new capital expense let's call that k bar we are spreading over over the output once more starting at the nine units meaning that the average fixed cost after we replace the capital becomes high once again so this one is going to be quite high value once more plus remember that we're producing more so we're paying more for employees even though it's at a diminishing rate but we're still having expenses for the wages because it's a variable input so that's going to be that's going to be increasing the cost as well so we have two two increasing effects of average costs which by definition increases the long run average cost once again so that's why we tend to increase from this range onwards so just to keep in mind this we replace the used the depreciated capital then when we start spreading it once again it becomes on average a high spread of fixed capital per unit and the uh, variable cost keeps rising because we keep hiring employees although it keeps rising at a diminishing rate but the total effect on the long run average cost is that it starts rising once again now the relationship between the long run marginal cost and the long run average cost is the same as it was in the short run by keeping the same analogy with the grades for micro when we have the average grade in the class being eight and then there's this one guy coming in the class passes the exam with a nine the nine of his exam drags up the average of the entire class that's why when the long run marginal cost rises right it rises more than the average cost the long run average cost is dragged up by definition that's just a mathematical property and the the same goes when it uh, 
Actually, I'm not going to say that because it's just going to confuse you. It's unnecessary information. Just keep this in mind. When the long run marginal cost is above the long run average cost, it's higher than the long run average cost. When the additional grade is higher than the average grade in the class, the new average grade in the class will rise. The new average cost in the production will start rising. That's why this starts rising when we consider the marginal cost is above, is above the long run average cost and by definition the intersection can only happen at the minimum point of the long run average cost because again the curve starts rising after it passes the minimum point over here hope this makes sense we'll leave it like that for this video in the next series we're gonna talk about decreasing increasing and constant returns to scale and their relationship to costs